Hi, this is Shambhavi. Welcome to my weekly podcast about spirituality, love, death, devotion, and waking up while living in a messy world. The Satsang with Shambhavi podcast is recorded live each week with students of our nonprofit community, Jayakula. For more information and to find out about attending a satsang, visit jayakula.org. Thanks for listening. Much love to you, wherever and however you are. I'm on this kick lately to remind everybody what the real essence of this tradition is, so that we don't get too attached and too serious about all of the practices that we do and our bath. So this is from... <laughs> yeah, like our bath. My bath. No path. Yeah, we are very, very serious. My spiritual practice. Reminding ourselves of the essence of the tradition means reminding ourselves that we have to somehow figure out how to be internally relating to livingness directly. That's what we should be doing at all times. And if we do our practice without doing that, well, that's fine. Hopefully, eventually, it'll grind away our density so that we can do that. But there's this very subtle kind of internal work that cannot be described that we need to be doing all the time when we practice, when we're out and about, to relate ourselves directly to living presence. That is the essence of the practice. And everything else we do is about that, or somehow getting into the position where we can do that. It isn't about the mantras. It's not about the ritual. It's, those things are just tools. So this is from the Tantra Loka, from Abhinavagupta's main work. So he's talking here about Satarka, which is what he calls a kind of intuition or direct knowing, or direct perception, or direct cognition might be a good translation of it. And he says this is the essence of everything, this direct knowing, this direct cognition, sat-tarka. It means the perception of existence, or the perception of reality, the perception of that. It means cognition. So those who have the knowledge, meaning who have the capacity to directly see and perceive things, slice the root of duality with the acts of intuitive reason. This is In this text, that's how Satarka is being translated as intuitive reason. I don't, I don't think that's the best translation. So that this direct perception just slices through everything. I mean, it slices through all your preconceptions. It slices through even your ordinary reasoning at times. You know, sometimes what you directly perceive runs counter to ordinary mind's rationales. So those who have the knowledge slice the root of duality with the acts of intuitive reason, sharpened to the highest degree. This is their certainty. So you guys are always asking about confidence. How can you have confidence? And you have confidence by directly perceiving how things are. That is the actual certainty. That's where it comes from. Certainty doesn't come when you ask me a question and I give you an explanation. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> as we know, because the same questions keep getting asked all the time. <laughs> it could come if in that moment you have a direct perception of the reality of what I'm saying. But sim- a simple explanation even if given in wonderful words, does not cut the root of conceptual perception and give you that direct knowing that brings absolute certainty. Awakened beings call this intuitive reason, satarka, bhavana, mystical realization. It can also be called the wish-fulfilling cow because it causes the sudden blossoming of the reality that is beyond anything imaginable meaning the, a sudden blossoming of your immersion in no, uh, knowledge of, ability to interact with that reality that is beyond anything imaginable. So it blossoms for you. Malini Vidayu Tara Tantra says, this intuitive reason, Tarka, is the supreme limb of yoga. 
in the next part, he talks about that all of the other limbs of yoga are not as important as this direct knowing. As we have said, intuitive reason, tarka, brings discrimination to the doubts relative to duality, meaning it brings discrimination in the sense of direct understanding. Direct understanding of the nature of things is the ultimate discrimination. It clears all doubts about the nature of duality, this direct perception. Therefore, if the practices of restraint and the other limbs of yoga favor the acquisition of this direct perception, they can serve as helpful means. But they're not the main thing. Right? So if you do, let's say, hatha yoga, or, and this is what he talks about a little bit later in the text too, if you do hatha yoga, if you do meditation, if you do mantra, if you do kriya yoga, if you do puja, if those things are skillful means to help you to arrive at direct perception, then they are helpful. But if you're doing them for some other reason, or you think that they are the thing themselves, you know, that you rack up a zillion mantras, or you sit for however long doing meditation, if, if that's what you think the achievement is, then they're useless, right? They have nothing to do with, with trika if that's how you're doing them. According to the Malini uh, Vijayotara Tantra, it's hard to remember that, in the section that starts with um, neither duality nor non-duality nor worship of the linga, etc., Lord Shiva declares, all prescriptions or prohibitions, yoga practices based on limbs, such as control of the breath and others, all that is a decoy. This is being translated from the French into English, so God knows what the original Sanskrit word is. But you could say all of that is simply a means. You know, all of that is simply, it, it isn't the main point, right? And then Lord Shiva says, these systems are not worth one-sixteenth of the innate path of Trika. Lord Shiva? Lord Shiva said that, for reals. <laughs> So this is just to remind everybody of what, what kind of path we're really on. What is the point? There is only one point, to have direct perception of the nature of self, of reality, of God. All, that all means the same thing. So we should have no other attachment, no other purpose, and no other orientation toward all the other practices we do other than that. That the point is that we can eventually, if not immediately, get to the place where we have the means within ourselves, as, he, as Abhinav Gupta says somewhere else in the text, within ourselves to go deeper and deeper and deeper into the subtle nature of reality until it becomes our constant state of awareness. And that is the only point. And then having had that shift in our experience, then all of these practices, we can stop doing them and simply have the one practice of remaining immersed in that and deepening our immersion in it. So we use these practices only for that purpose. And what that means for you all is that you have to have the bhavana, right? You have to have the orientation. You have to develop the feeling for that presence, and you have to keep applying yourself to that. And absolutely no one can tell you how to do that. Nobody told me how to do it. And you discover within yourself or within that all of the teachings. You know, most of the teachings in the Tantra Loka, I already knew because of my practice, and no one had given me those teachings. Whenever I read these things, it's like, yeah, I, I discovered that on my own. All of the wisdom is already in you. It's already here. You can hear the teachings. You can receive transmission. You can study the teachings, but you have to discover for yourself. And that is actually the practice. As we're doing a lot of practice, because most people in this community do a fair amount of practice, and those of you that are coming on the retreat, that's what it's about, right? 
It's not about like grueling your way through how, however long your practice is in the morning or toughing it out through two, sit, sitting for two hours. It's like whatever is happening, if you start to fall into those kind of attitudes, you have to immediately shift. Oh, how can I orient myself to what's alive here? Right? How can I let the subtlety of the situation become more apparent to me? And this is very, very, very fine internal work that we do. You know, something unfurling to feel something very subtle. I don't know. There's no way to describe it. Somehow you have to learn how to do that work. If you don't know what I'm talking about now and you can't imagine it, then, you know, you do a lot of practice and eventually your, your senses themselves, which are intelligences of God, will learn themselves how to do it, eventually. And we don't know when that might happen. But for those of you that have a little of that capacity, or some of that capacity, or maybe even a good measure of that capacity, that's what you should be doing at all times when practicing, or when at the grocery store, or anywhere. And eventually it becomes second nature or first nature. I never know what, what do they mean second nature? How could something be natural and spontaneous and be second nature? It doesn't make sense. First nature. (laughs) This is absolutely what makes this tradition and other traditions like it what they are. 